welcome to another video and today I wanted to do a quick revisit, a quick refresher of how you can access uh, APIs using Microsoft Excel new for 2024. I should say 2025 because we're almost at the end of 2024. So the world of APIs continues to grow. It's becoming a more of a popular technology uh, and it's now expanded across multiple industry verticals and sectors. Anywhere you go today, you'll come across APIs. But really, I wanted to uh, I wanted to do a quick recap on some of the theory behind an API first. So if I could just grab your attention for literally a couple of minutes, we'll run through what an API exactly is for those of you who aren't exactly aware. So an API is short for application programming interface. In in short summary, it's a technology. And it's a technology that allows for two machines to communicate between one another. And it allows for those two machines to transfer data from one end to another. And you can push data or you can pull data. Uh, and a, a, a pull method is no, normally known as a get method. And when you push data, it's obviously a push request. So there's essentially two main ways to transfer data and both of them or via this application programming interface, which is what we commonly call an API today. Now, APIs, there are many different types of frameworks when it comes to APIs. The most common one that exists today is a REST framework or REST API, but you will come across some older ones as well, like SOAP, which is still exists, but largely being phased out for REST. But a more a newer kid on the block is the GraphQL or GraphQL API, which is now a newer technology and that was developed by Facebook or Meta and that's now being made public uh, open source now for anyone to to use but rest api is the most common type of api framework out there and APIs exist in the both both the public and private domain. So you'll come across public APIs, which we'll cover today. You know, you can get APIs from weather channels. You can get APIs from uh, stock exchanges. You can get APIs from even banks. But some of them are also private as well. So there are a lot of companies out there and businesses that will offer their data, but only via a private API. And many of them are subscription only. Now, both public and private APIs can be accessed uh, using common technology, but many of them or some of them do have keys or require authentication keys, uh, which we will cover in a future video. Uh, API keys are increasingly quite common now. And you also have some which require tokens as well, known as bear tokens. So we'll cover them in a future video. But today we'll look at a public API. And APIs generally, when you query an API, the data you return is not essentially a text. It's not always a text format. Usually it comes back in the format of JSON uh, data or XML data. And we'll look at an ex JSON example today, but just, just keep that in the back of your mind. A lot of the data that comes back from an API is in one of those two formats usually, and you need to be skilled at handling JSON or XML to then translate and transfer that into a more user-friendly format, like a CSV file or a spreadsheet. And then lastly, I want to mention that up until last few years, if you wanted to get data from an API, you had to learn how to code in a language like Python or Java or C. But today you can actually do it in Excel and we'll use Power Query to do that. So I just want to really recap what an API is and just go over some basics and fundamentals. But right now I want to get straight into a public API, which I want to show you right now. So the one I have in question, uh, the one I have in mind is a is the random user API. So there's there's a previous there was one I did in a previous video, uh, and I I'm not sure if that exists anymore. But this one is a more this one is definitely a more richer API, and I want to cover exactly what this is. Right. So a random user generator or the random user API right here allows you to generate a random user profile. It, it, exactly as the name suggests, it allows you to generate a random user. Now, why would you do that? So here you can see I've got, for instance, uh, a random user called Hunter Terry. I've got uh, this person's email address. I've got their birthday or the date of birth. I've got their address. I've got their telephone number and I've even got like their password. None of this is real. All this is fictional. But you can see that it's a random user and I can use this random user 
to test a software application, a mobile app or a web app or a database. I can take random data and populate my database with some random, random, random people. And that in essence will allow me to do more testing. And every time I refresh this page, you'll get a new random user. So here you can see Sara Alvarez, Benjamin Butler, Diane Sullivan, so on and so forth. So what I want to do is I want each one of these data points in a spreadsheet. Okay. Now the, you know, the simplest way to do it is just a copy, paste, copy, paste, but there's a way to access this data via an API. And this is what is known as a random API. Now to access the API, you just go to the documentation and then the documentation kind of gives you all the information you need to access the API. But really what you really need to start off with is this URL. Okay, so this URL, HTTPS, randomuser.me forward slash API forward slash is the endpoint for the, for the API itself. And most people don't realize this, but the easiest way to access an API is actually in your browser. So if I input this API um, URL endpoint and then hit enter, believe it or not, you actually return a, some data from the API. So here's a random user. You can see it's, it's a female. Uh, person, you can see obviously Mrs. Kaya Gatti is a surname. Again, hit enter and refresh. Again, Sarah Lam. So you can see I've, we've actually got some data from the URL itself, uh, and this is generating data from the API. If I click on this option here, pretty print, it then you know just formats it so you can clearly see in a, a more easier format who this person is. I've got Sarah Lam. So basically, I want this data, but I want it in a spreadsheet. So now we're going to jump to Excel. So what I want you to do is go into data and this is what it will kickstart Power Query. You go to get data from other sources and then from web. You need to click this option here. And then once we're in this option, it'll open up a pop-up and this is where I ask you for, you know, a, your basic URL, your URL endpoint. And remember, random user.me forward slash API forward slash is what we want. Click OK. And that will then trigger the wizard. Um, essentially, this is what we, I'm just gonna refresh this. This is what we use to build our query, our API query. And here you can see we've got two options. We've got results and info. Uh, and you can see you've got applied steps and the query name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill down into this API result and you're gonna see multiple steps take shape on the right hand side. But what we need to do is format the data before we load it into a spreadsheet. So firstly, we're gonna click on a uh, list. Then we're gonna click on record. And now you can see you've got data points for this user. You can see gender, name, location. But obviously some of these are still shown record because these data points are sat within a nested data, data set. So to get name, you need to drill down one more layer or one more level. Um, but before we do that, we're just going to take exactly what we have here and put that into a table. So now we've got the values on our left, uh, sorry, values on our right and the, the field name values on our left. I now want to pivot this and to do that, I go to transform and I click the option transpose. So that will now flip the orientation of both these columns. Done. So now we've got the field names across our top and the values across the bottom but we don't really need to rename these columns and i want to use the name uh, that i have here in row one as the name for my columns so to do that power query has a really useful feature called use first row as headers and i'm just going to click on this option okay so now i've got the first row as headers so you've got gender name location email i'm now starting to format the data that i need and you can scroll along to the right and see I've got more information here. So I've got things like phone number, cell number. Uh, I've got things like NAT, which is short for nationality. We'll come on to that in a moment. So now I want to I want to get more data out of this query result, this API query. And I can see I've got name, but I can't see the person's name. So if you click on these two opposing arrows here, you can then drill down and expand this name. And now I can see exactly what I have here. I have title first and last. So I'm going to take all of it and click OK. And perfect. I've now got the title. I've got the first name and the last name. Now notice this name is actually in, in what looks like some kind of Arabic language. So bear in mind, this user 
this user that you're generating it could be anyone from anywhere in the world okay so we'll just take this for now uh, uh not ideal we wanted it in english but we'll take it for now and then we can also go through some other detailed data points as well so we've got location so i can take city street uh state country i don't need all of these so i only want city country uh and that's it i'll just take that and i'll click okay so this person's from iran uh and then i can see the email uh scroll to the right i can see login do i need the login not really so i can right click and remove okay do i need the date of birth yes i do let's expand this and drill it down i only i want both of these so i'm gonna click okay i want date and age okay perfect scroll to the right some registered details i don't need that i'm going to remove uh scroll more to the right i don't need picture so i'm going to remove that i don't actually need phone i just need the cell phone so i'm going to keep cell and i don't need id i'm going to remove id and then lastly you can see nat is actually short for nationality so i'm going to rename this to nationality okay and we're done and now I've got the data that I need and you can see all the applied steps. So we've now got one row of random user data. We know who this is. We've got some data points that we require. And now we can go to home, close and load and hit close and load. And what that will do now is load the query into our spreadsheet. Now straight away, you will notice something. You'll notice that this user has changed. Now, why is that? Remember, every time you query from the API it will generate a new a new user because we've now loaded the data into our spreadsheet it's rerun the query again to give us a different user but note that we've got all the columns that we wanted so we've got gender name you can rename these now so you can just obviously rename these um, so I can just click on first name I can just click on last name and enter last name but we've now got some data in our spreadsheet so that's in short summary how you can retrieve data from an API using Microsoft Excel. But we're going to dive into this API in a bit more detail and I'll look at some of the data points. So what else can we do here? We can actually generate multiple value, multiple records here. So here, one of the API endpoints, uh, parameters rather, is to use results. And you can set a number on the results to generate more than one record of, of, of user data. So here, if I take the URL, put it here, I can now say I want results for, say, two users. And now will give me two sets of users. So here you got Mr. Onur. I can't pronounce his surname. And you'll also have another one here. If we scroll further down, there'll be another one, a Miss Alexis Myers. Okay. And we can pretty print this and see this. So what if we want the same thing? We can do that in Excel. I'm just going to create a new API, a new call to the API. Uh, I'm going to go to data, get data, and I'm going to click from web again. But this time, I'm going to go to advance. So you're going to put in the URL. So you might remember the URL again. Uh, we need we need to fetch the URL endpoint. I'm going to put that in the first column right here, uh, the first box right here, and then I need the second part to the URL, which is the endpoint remember which is the parameter which we talked about for multiple users which is this portion right here the question mark results equal a number so i'm going to put that right here and this time i want let's just say i'm going to take five five users and then now we've got our url at the top and the parameter and then we're going to click ok and same thing as before we we see another we see another similar set of um results we're going to have to we need to click on lists and now we've got five records and then what i want to do is uh, move that into a table click ok and i want to expand this table to show me all the records um now you can see where we're going with this and now i can start to obviously as it, as it, as before expand on all of these columns that i want so address name so on and so forth decide what i want to keep what i want to remove so i'm just going to remove this one i'll remove the login uh date of birth i can keep um registered i'm going to remove obviously i've missed a step here where i need to rename the columns but that's fine and then i'm going to click close and load 
and now I have five sets of user records. All right. So this is a, another way how you this is another way to show you how you can manipulate the API and your API call to retrieve data that you want in the format that you want. And then last thing, you some of you are probably wondering, Sid, you know, I want the same set of data for the same record all the time, right? Every time you refresh the query, the the user changes. Well, believe it or not, there is a way to lock the record to the same user. If you scroll down here in the API documentation, you'll see there's a parameter called seeds. And a seed allows you to generate the data, the same set of data for the same set of users. And a random keyword will generate that set of data. So here, if I take this URL, this is the last example. If I enter foobar, you get this random user. And if you put in a random keyword, so I'm just going to enter, you can enter anything really, you can enter biscuit, you can enter apple, it'll give you that same user all the time based on the keyword. And there must be some kind of algorithm behind this. But all you need to know is that if you enter a keyword like moon, you get this user here, Wesley Simpson. So let's take this and try and get the same user in our API via Excel. So what we're going to do, once again, data from web, shortcut right here, advanced. I'm going to put in the base URL at the top, and the keyword is moon. So question mark seed equals moon. Click OK. Again, similar kind of uh, screen as before. We're going to click on list, click on record, uh, move that into a table. I'm moving a bit fast here. Transform. I'm going to transpose this and then use my first row as headers. And let's see the name. We're looking for Wesley Simpson. And there we go, Mr. Wesley Simpson. All right. So we can now load that into our spreadsheet. And we now have Mr. Wesley Simpson. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I just wanted to get back into the exploration of APIs using Microsoft Excel. There's so much out there. I mean, this is one API of many. Um, I will do more videos in future on APIs. I'll do another one in future where we look at a, a more technical API, which requires a slightly richer understanding. Uh, and we'll also look at API keys. But do explore this API. I think it's a great example and an easy one to get started with. Randomuser.me. I don't own this website. I don't, I'm not part of this project. But I think it's a great example uh, which you can use to play and and build some experience and knowledge um, of querying APIs in Excel. So guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this has been useful. I hope it helps you in any personal projects that you have or any work-related projects. But um, I really hope uh, if you have any comment, do drop a comment, do drop a like. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you in the next one where we'll cover more in APIs within Microsoft Excel and Python. Take care, guys. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.